Hello friends, my name is Karun Nagpal. I am a registered valuer. So uh, in this video, we will talk about the India's. So India's covers five marks of the IBBI valuation examination, and in total, we have four India's. Uh, that is fair value measurement, impairment of assets, financial instrument, and business combination. So India's uh, are basically the accounting standard that are mandatorily to be followed by companies who have net worth of more than. 250 crore so in india we follow accounting standard and indias so as i said uh, more than 250 crore if you have net worth you have to follow the indias and in case you have uh, less than 250 crore so you have the option to choose uh, maybe you can uh, sue moto uh, use the indias or you can use the erstwhile uh, as accounting standard indias are the convergence with ifrs so uh, we have uh, converged them into indian scenario and that are applicable for indian company so let us start with the fair value measurement first then in our coming videos we will talk about rest of the indias also fair value measurement indias 113 so uh, fair value measurement is bought in uh, sometime in uh, 2008 when subprime crisis happened in U united states so through a faz there we call it as uh, faz uh, financial accounting standard so faz 157 was bought in wherein the, it it uh, asked for the hierarchy and later on through uh, asus it got developed and it has emerged as a full fledged uh, standard however in ifrs uh, so ifrs 13 so that is a very well nicely drafted accounting standard and indian uh, indias 113 is the uh, replica of ifrs uh, 13 uh, let me give you an overview of this standard so we will talk about the definition of fair value so what is included and what is excluded how to measure the fair value we will talk about the valuation premise Uh, about the fair value hierarchy why uh, to report uh, the fair value hierarchy the valuation approach is uh, the adjustment made in the valuation once you identify the value and the disclosure requirements in the financial statement of uh, those companies to whom this uh, uh, indias is applicable and uh, finally we will also talk about uh, the covid impact on financial reporting though this is not part of the syllabus but uh, i will not spend much time on that uh, maybe 4 uh, 5 minutes i'll uh, make you aware of the scenario and how uh, the covid has impacted the uh, fair value measurements so what is fair value measurement first so this is the standard which defines the fair value and it uh, establishes the framework for measuring fair value how to measure the fair value and the disclosure so this is a general standard wherever other standards talk about the fair value measurement they will have to uh, come to this standard uh, and uh, compute the fair value as per indias 113 so indias 113 is applicable on all assets and liabilities so there are some assets and liabilities uh, that are excluded so we will talk about that also so let us first understand the fair value the definition of fair value so fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability so based upon the exit price notion uh, the valuation is to be determined uh, when you buy something you can you you should not treat that as the purchase price as the uh, fair value rather when you are willing to sell so what you will get in return of your sale is the fair value so it, it should be in an orderly transaction orderly means it should not be the forced one there should not be coercion or under any influence it should be done it should not be done and uh, it should be between the market participants so there must be a market and the value should be determined at the measurement date it is date specific valuation is always date specific the price what is today may not be in future so it is as on the date uh, the characteristic of fair value is it is a market based measurement not an entity specific suppose i have some investment if i do my valuation my valuation will be different from 
uh, some other having the same investment. So uh, that is why fair value measurement talks about the market measurement. So it should be determined by the market factor it, uh, that those should be observable. Anybody uh, can uh, see that those factors. And then the entity shall measure the fair value uh, assuming the best economic interest. So for example, uh, you have something and uh, you, you are not utilizing it uh, completely. So you should see that if I use that completely in the highest and the best possible way, I should be able to fetch that much. So basis that uh, you should uh, determine the fair value, whether you are using a market approach or income approach, basis the best economic interest, you should determine the fair value. And then the uh, fair value should be measured using the assumption that market participant would use when pricing the uh, assets and liabilities. So those risk assumption which the market or industry will use, uh, we would have to use that. Being an entity, if you have the projections, you cannot basis your own projection and your own assumption, you can uh, compute the fair value. You should take into account the market factors, what all risk assumption market will, uh, will take while uh, determining the fair value. Uh, then we have the uh, intention. Uh, so here the intention is irrelevant. Suppose we have uh, uh, any security which is classified as a held to maturity. That means we do not have any intention to sell that uh, security in, uh, till, till the time of maturity. So even if we do not want to sell that maturity, we, we have to fair value using the uh, market assumptions and the market factors. Maybe the prices are going down and up. So in our reporting, we will uh, take in, we will ignore the the fact that we have classified that uh, investment till HTM as an HTM held to maturity. So we will just determine the fair value uh, basis the factors uh, as on the date of valuation. Then uh, moving further, uh, what is excluded from this accounting standard? So in S 102, share based payment is excluded. Uh, for leases, we have in S uh, 17. So there is uh, an updated standard uh, as well for leases. Uh, in S 2, inventory is also excluded. In S 36, impairment is excluded. And disclosure requirement for employees benefits uh, in S 19 and uh, for india 36 also where we have to report the recoverable amount which is uh, fair value less cost to sell or the value in use so these are all excluded from this standard and wherever any standard talks about fair value determination we will have to follow india 113 so all assets and liabilities are covered by uh, india 113 this is a general standard so let us talk about the uh, orderly transaction now. What is orderly transaction? Because uh, the, the, the fair value definition is the basis for uh, determining the entire fair value measurements. So th that says fair value is the price that we receive to sell in, uh, any assets or transfer and liability in an orderly market or orderly transaction between market participant at a measurement date. So orderly transaction is the transaction which is usual and uh, customary. It should not be the forced one. There should not be a distress sale or in case of liquidation if you are selling something. So that should not be treated as an orderly uh, transaction. So when a transaction is not orderly, it says uh, if there is an inadequate exposure to the market. Suppose you have only a few transactions, then it will be not be treated as an orderly one and asset and liabilities are dealt with within uh, a few market participant or a single market participant if you enter into a deal private deal so that deal transaction uh, particular uh, price uh, determined in that deal would not be treated as fair value because that is a private deal if the seller is in insolvency or bankruptcy or is in distress, so a seller is uh, in the insolvency or he is making a sale, in that case also you cannot treat that transaction as fair value because he may be selling that, those assets in distress uh, for, because he, he do not have any liquidity. And if the transaction is outlier, suppose uh, in general something is getting 
traded at 60 and you purchase that uh, for 100 you cannot say that uh, fair value is uh, 100 because that is that do not uh, correlate with the market do not stand with the market measuring fair value how to measure so fair value measurement takes into account the characteristic of assets so what does that mean uh, the condition and location of the asset suppose you want to sell something at uh, uh, in Delhi and you have that asset lying down in somewhere in Lucknow so you will have to take into account there is a transportation cost to bring that asset to the market or the, uh, to Delhi so that you have to take into account while measuring the fair value if there are any kind of restrictions attached to the uh, sale or use of asset so you will have to take into account suppose some uh, litigation is there some kind of restriction dispute is there so you will have to take into account that while measuring the fair value and uh, uh, fair value measurement assume that the transaction is taking place in the principal market and in the absence of principal market uh, most advantageous market so what is principal market and most advantageous market let us understand with the help of example um, principal market so this is something where we have the volume greatest volume uh, or the activity so suppose uh, something is listed on bsc and nsc and nsc is having thrice uh, volume than the BSC so automatically uh, the market having the highest volume in terms of activity will be treated as the principal market so clearly let's take an example here so stock X is traded in market A at a price of 2020 20, and in market B at a price of 22 however the average trade per day in market A is higher than market B so because this is the average trade market A will become the uh, principal market and uh, 20 the price although that is less than the market uh, B in market B we have 20 to higher price even then we have to uh, take the fair value as 20 because the principal market is market A then the in case in case you are not able to identify the principal market suppose uh, in market a and b you have uh, more or less the same trade then so then in that case we will take the most advantageous market so most advantageous market is the market that maximizes the amount that would be received to sell an asset or in case of liability it minimizes the amount and in uh, determining the most advantageous market we will have to take into account the transaction cost and the transportation cost as well so let us understand that stock Y is uh, getting traded in market A and market B stock Y in market A is priced at uh, 31 in market B it is for 30 and average trade is more or less the same in both the markets now we cannot identify the principal market here because the uh, criteria for determining the principal market is the trade trade is more or less the same in both the market now what we have to do we would have to determine the advantages market by looking at the price market a seems to be more advantageous but we while determining the most advantages market we will have to adjust the transaction cost and the transportation cost so transaction cost is 3 in market A and 1 in market B and transportation cost is 5 and 5 same in both the markets. So net price would be 23 in market A and 24 in market B. So net price is advantageous in market B. Here market B will become the most advantageous market although the price in market A is higher than market B yet market B will become uh, most advantages because we will have to take into account the transaction cost and the transportation cost then determining the fair value so when we have identified the markets now then after that we will have to determine the fair value so while determining the fair value we will take into account only the transportation cost and not the transaction cost why uh, why not the transaction cost now because fair value uh, is just hypothetical we are determining the fair value we are not selling uh, our asset or disposing of our liability we are just determining the fair value and in determination the transaction cost 
is hypothetical because we are not going to sell. Suppose uh, we do not have any intention to sell. Uh, we have classified something as uh, held to maturity and uh, we have to determine the fair value. So that is just a hypothetical. But in case of uh, non-financial asset, uh, we if uh, we cannot bring that to the market, we cannot sell. So we will assume that we first have to bring that particular asset to the market. Then only we would be able to sell that asset. So therefore, it should not be adjusted for the transaction cost. It should be only adjusted for the transportation cost. So again, uh, coming back to our example. So our prices wo, uh, was 31 and 30 in market A and B respectively. Average trade was more or less same. Transaction cost uh, 3 and 1, transportation uh, 5 in both the markets. So for determining the most advantageous market, uh, uh, we have de we determined that market B was the most advantageous market. Now, in uh, determining the fair value, we have to adjust only the transportation cost. So, 31 minus 5, 31 minus 5, 26, and here 30 minus 5, 25. So, fair value would be 25 because our most advantageous market is market B. Then uh, moving further, uh, what should be the fair value uh, at the time of initial recognition? So at the time of initial recognition, fair value is the entry price. Entry price uh, means your transaction price. When the asset is acquired or assumed in exchange, your entry price will become fair value. So your initial transaction price will be the fair value. But however, in some cases, transaction price may not represent the fair value uh, in case the transaction happened between related party, in case of any distressed or forced transaction, in case uh, where the, the transaction happened uh, in a market which is not the principal or most advantageous market. And in case of business combination also when you have acquired business as a whole, you may not be able to allocate the uh, goodwill uh, on different assets. So you may not be determined the fair value in that case. Then moving on to the valuation premise. Uh, so valuation premise is something uh, which is we can say as the basis of valuation. Before doing any valuation, we will have to determine the valuation premise. In this case, uh, in case of one, uh, India's 113, highest and the best use is the valuation premise. What is highest and the best use? Uh, that you assume that you are using your uh, non-financial asset to the maximum possible extent. Then we have the going concern. We all understand going concern value. We assume that our entity will go for foreseeable future as is where is basis. We understand orderly liquidation in case of liquidation uh, when you are selling the assets. So in under IBC also uh, a valuer has to determine the fair value as the, and the liquidation value. A forced transaction where some restriction is there. So uh, by a court order you have to dispose of or transfer any asset like that. So uh, let us understand the highest and the best use uh, which is applicable for India's 113. So in case of non-financial assets, it takes into account the assets ability to generate the economic benefits in its highest and the best use. Uh, how is that? How will that work? Let's take an example. Suppose you have a building that is a seven story building and you have started your operations recently and you have occupied two uh, stories. Then in future you have planned to occupy rest of the building as well. For now, if you let out that building, you will be able to fetch some rent uh, from that. And uh, you have not let out that because you have uh, expansion plans in future. So while determining the fair value, if we are using the income approach, we will take into account the notional rent we would have got in case we have uh, let out that property. So, notional rent we will take uh, into account because that will be the highest and the best use of that uh, particular asset. So while determining the fair value, we will have to take into account the notional rent as well. And in case of uh, determination of highest and the best use, 
uh, we should see that it should be physically possible that it should not be like in a raw state that we cannot let it out and legally permissible uh, there should not be restriction uh, attached to that and financially feasible that in case it that is in a, a raw state so we will have to incur additional cost to make it fit for the fit for use so we will have to take into account that and in case while you are making the disclosure your current use for example in uh, in this case our building uh, we have not uh, let out so in the financial reporting in your uh, financial accounts you will have to uh, state that why i have kept that building idle uh, what are my future plans so you will have to uh, report that in case your current use is different from the highest and the best use so in case uh, in that case disclosure is required then moving further to the fair value hierarchy so india categorizes the assets and liabilities into three level of hierarchy uh, level 1 and 2 are based upon the observable uh, inputs and three is on the basis of unobservable inputs so uh, what are observable inputs so observable inputs are those inputs which are developed using the market data such as the uh, pricing information available in the market and uh, yield curve etc so level 1 is directly market related without any adjustment market driven uh, for example the something which is listed on the stock exchange you just take the price from the stock exchange that will be market uh, that will be level 1 and uh, level 2 will be suppose uh, you have something not listed and but however you are using the market observable data which is available to other market participants as well so in that case it will be classified as level 2 and level 3 is something where you do not have any market observable data you are using your own approaches and own methods to arrive at the fair value in that case it will be level 3 so let us understand uh, the hierarchy in detail with examples so this is how we have to report level 1 2 and 3 and then total in a tabular format for all the assets and liabilities and level 1 are those uh, which are directly related to the market uh, without any adjustment like quoted price for uh, uh, the identical assets or liabilities suppose i have i am holding tata motors share so somebody else is also holding tata motor share we both will price that uh, uh, shares in our uh, financial statements at the same price because that is listed on the stock exchange and suppose on uh, 30th june we are making a disclosure the price would be same in the in case there is a volatility in the market uh, on 30th also we can take the weighted average or volume weighted average in case there is a high volatility uh, level 2 is something suppose your company uh, in which you have invested is not listed on a ex stock exchange suppose uh, again tata motors in case of tata motors i am holding share of another company which is of similar size of tata motors into similar segment similar uh, operations uh, so i may take the value of the tata motors and make some adjustment to the prices basis uh, the factors market factors and to arrive at the uh, value of my securities so that is although observable the basis is observable in the market that will be classified as a level 2 also in case of a derivative underlying asset which is getting traded so mostly the derivatives are level 2 uh, also when we are using the yield curve implied volatility credit spread to determine the value of our investment so that all will be classified as level 2 level 3 is something where we do not have any observable data suppose we have uh, some investment uh, in a closely held company which is not listed and we could not find any comparable company outside then what we will have to do we will have to use our own models or techniques maybe discounted cash flow we will uh, estimate the projections and uh, we will discount that to arrive at the value of that investment so in that case the uh, value will be based on, based upon the unobservable inputs and we will have to classify that as a level 3 for identifying the levels we would have to uh, use the valuation approaches 
so there are only three valuation approaches in total whether we call it as valuation approach or valuation technique uh, there are only three there would be n number of methods under this approach but the uh, approaches will remain three uh, first one is market approach then we have income approach and then we have cost approach or some may call it as an asset approach market approach uh, determined by the market observable by market transaction identical or comparable assets or liabilities under income approach uh, we use the future benefits future uh, cash flows and using a discount factor or capitalization rate we determine the uh, value using the income which we will be able to earn uh, from that asset in case of cost approach uh, we use the current replacement or reproduction cost so uh, something if you have an asset what you will have to spend to uh, get that asset so that is the cost approach or asset approach so this uh, specifically this valuation approach covers three marks in ibbi valuation examination syllabus we will talk about uh, the valuation approaches in detail with examples and illustration and we will also talk about the methods used under in uh, these three approaches uh, in detail when we cover the that three marks uh, of valuation approaches in uh, i'll share a separate video on that then we have the valuation adjustment so there may be n number of adjustment however most commonly used are discount for lack of marketability and discount for lack of control suppose your investment you have uh, you are holding 25 percent of the shares in an investment you may not be able to sell 25 entire lot at one go if you have intention to sell that or in case uh, you have uh, somebody have substantial control over the entity some may not have so while determining the value you for your piece suppose you hold 25 percent in that case you have uh, substantial control so you will have to adjust your fair value uh, for the control or in case you do not have control you will have to discount that for lack of control so these are the most commonly used uh, adjustment apart from that uh, adjustment may be for tax concession esop any qualification given by the auditor suppose uh, the va value is determined in the stock exchange and subsequently there is some kind of uh, uh, qualification in the audit report so you may adjust that uh, in due diligence report and obviously COVID-19 since it has impacted so uh, companies have already made adjustment in, the, in their valuation. So there may be other uh, adjustment as well basis the scenario basis the market environment you will have to determine that. Then coming to the disclosure so before uh, disclosure we first need to understand what is recurring and non-recurring measurement as the term says recurring. Uh, you will it will reoccur over the period and non-recurring it will not so recurring is those which is required to be reported at each reporting date for for those assets and liabilities you will have to for each reporting date you will have to report them as uh, at fair value for example available for sale investment are reported at fair value through OCI uh, therefore available for sale investments will be recurring at each uh, measurement date you will have to report the fair value in case of non recurring fair value measurement so uh, for example you have classified something uh, into held for sale so that classification will trigger the fair valuation so otherwise you uh, report the asset or liability at amortized cost but since you have classified that as held for sale you will have to report the fair value and you will have to carry that at fair value uh, something which is impaired suppose goodwill or uh, your real estate property pp and d something which is impaired you will have to in subsequent uh, reporting period you will have to carry that at fair value that is which is required by the accounting standard uh, so before jumping into the disclosure so let me give you an example so this will uh, after that you will be able to appreciate and you will understand uh, the reporting requirement better so uh, if we talk about uh, historically how uh, we were representing the the uh, investments in the in our financial statements 
so uh, we in in the balance sheet we were reporting the investments say for example we have uh, uh, 2500 crore uh, investment so we were representing and in notes to accounts we were giving the breakup of those investment uh, into this 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 this, this companies and to, in total suppose uh, company i have invested in company a and i have reported that at 250 crore some other may have invested uh, the same amount in uh, company a they may be valuing that investment on their own assumption and basis so they may be giving it as a 500 so that is why i need felt that uh, the reporting should be the valuation should be done on the market observable basis and they have initially classified into level hierarchy they say that in case you are uh, determining the fair value on the basis of level uh, on the basis of market observable input treat it as level one then in case of any adjustment in the market uh, data then level two and in case of level three uh, uh, if you are using the uh, your own assumption then they ask for since the level 3 is prone because you can make your adjustment and you can uh, increase the value of your asset or decrease uh, the value of your liability so they ask for the activity within level 3 they ask me tell us the what was the opening balance what what what, what is the driver for the change in the balance as compared to the previous period so that the company may not on its own uh, increase the value of that investment. So they ask for what you have uh, moved to other comprehensive income and P&L and what uh, in case of any sale or purchase or any transfer from within the levels out of level 3 to uh, 2 or uh, uh, from 2 to 3. And for level 3 especially they ask for uh, the valuation techniques. What technique have you used to determine the of fair value here uh, say for example uh, the uh, discounted uh, uh, cash flows unobservable inputs you have used like discount rate what is the discount rate give us the range of those in uh, discount rate suppose within an investment if you have uh, 20 investments so if you are discounting some investment at 6% uh, uh, say for example and some other at 15% so provide us the range of the inputs uh, your discount rate you have used to uh, determine the fair value and also tell us the weighted average of those uh, discount rates and then finally tell us the sensitivity analysis so that talks about uh, the what will happen in case you shift your discount rate suppose from 8 to 9 percent what would be the impact on your fair value so tell us about that also so these all are required in the india's 113 then uh, coming back to the disclosure so first of all hierarchy as we have discussed level 1 2 and 3 and then for transfer within 1 and 2 you will have to tell report that for level 3 uh, reconciliation uh, then valuation technique, sensitivity analysis, transfer in and out from level 3 and for non-recurring again level hierarchy, unobservable inputs uh, used in measuring those uh, fair value measurement you will have to disclose and uh, uh, those financial instruments which are although not carried at fair value but are carried at amortized cost you will have to report the their uh, fair value as well in the consolidated balance sheet. So this is the table where I have shown you the uh, disclosure, you can uh, uh, go through that later. Then moving on to our next topic which is COVID-19 impact on fair value measurement. So that is not part of syllabus but I thought of including that uh, into my presentation because uh, you will be able to make, uh, make you understand uh, the fair value measurement better uh, considering the COVID-19 scenario. So uh, how it will impact the fair value hierarchy? May impact, it may impact the classification uh, within the fair value hierarchy. How COVID-19 will impact? Because something uh, as a level one market, some, some securities which were uh, earlier getting traded in the market right now due to COVID, they, have, uh, they do not have volume. So you may have to classify that as a level 2. Suppose in case you were easily able to get the broker quotes when you were classifying something at, as a level 2, you may not be able to get the broker quotes in that case. So you may have to shuffle the uh, assets or liability within the hierarchy due to COVID. 
and uh, make adjustment on account of some uh, observable inputs or some of the absorbable inputs which were earlier available uh, that may be volatile due to covid so you may not be rely upon the observable inputs uh, available in the market and you have may have to uh, make adjustment to those in inputs so it will again impact the fair value hierarchy and uh, at times you may have to replace the observable inputs uh, with the unobservable inputs earlier the market in the market yield curve were available now yield curves are not available so or they they are volatile so you may not be able to completely rely on the observable data and in that that case you may have to uh, use your the unobservable inputs so again it will be classified as level 3 uh, the the items which were not active which were earlier active now not active but earlier valued using the observable inputs for example uh, something which is uh, earlier classified as level 2 now your input observable input has become volatile so you may not be able to uh, assess uh, classify that as level 2 you may require additional uh, scrutiny to value that level 2 investment or you may need to uh, use the different sources or different methods to determine the fair value your method uh, which you are using may not at all work if you are using the discounted cash flow that may not be because you may not be able to assess the uh, future cash flows uh, uh, considering the current scenario and uh, uh, the transaction may not be the orderly transaction because a uh, lot of companies are not able to meet their uh, liquidity re retain their liquidity so th they may able to disp they, they would intend to dispose of their asset at the price uh, lesser than the what it was earlier getting traded at so that you will have to take into account then uh, due to covid 19 issue may be faced in determining the future cash flow as uncertainty is there you may not be able to project the cash flows difficulty may be there in the selection of valuation method uh, which method i should apply whether should uh, i should use the income approach no whether i should use the capitalization approach doubtful so that will be uh, difficult to decide which method uh, i should use whether i should go uh, with the asset approach again i'm not sure so impact on assumption uh, would be there discount rate so discount rate is something uh, uh, which is the risk free rate plus your uh, risk premium so risk free rate is going down day by day you may not be able to assess the uh, risk premium risk premium is higher so again difficulty in uh, determining the discount rate credit spread is again credit spread is something uh, uh, for same maturity the, the security with the same maturity having different yields so that is the spread so again spread is uh, again volatile credit spread are correct credit spreads are not available in the market again uh, difficulty in uh, taking assumption uh, comparable data may not be available in the market uh, unusual fluctuations are there so you will have to be cautious and difficulty in making the adjustment discount for lack of marketability so again volatile market difficulty assessing the covid relief impact so uh, most of the governments have given the relief impact so how that impact we would have to take into account in our financial statement so again yet to be determined so these uh, would be the challenges in uh, uh, doing the fair value measurements uh, that's all in my video so i will be coming up with my next video on india's 36 uh, that is impairment of assets and till then stay tuned and thank you for watching